Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, what is making you cry when all your sins have been forgiven, past and what is to come? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Should I not be a grateful slave? Gratitude. Ya yuhalladina amanu, kulu min tayyibati ma razaqnaakum. وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ O oh, you who believe, eat of the good things of Allah, but show gratitude for those things. If you are truly worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most blessed things that we have in this world is food. It brings us together, it nourishes our bodies, it sustains us. And then the pleasure of food itself. Allah could have made brackish water that we had to drink. He could have given us rocks that we had to crush as our nutrition. But He gave us cherries and grapes and figs. He gave us varieties of meats. He gave us all of the blessings that the earth brings forth. What does Allah ask us? Shukr. اعملوا آل داود شكرا وقليل من عبادي الشكور Work, do things out of gratitude. O oh, Al Dawood, and how few of my servants are always grateful. One of the worst things about modern times is ingratitude is cultivated in people. They're ungrateful for the police, they're ungrateful for government, they're ungrateful for their education, they're ungrateful for everything. People just complain all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ Your Lord has declared, if you're grateful, I will increase you in blessings to be grateful for. But if you are an ingrate, in fact, if you show ingratitude, I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. This is a metaphysical equation. Gratitude equals increase in blessings. Ingratitude equals decrease in blessings. This is a qa'idah, it's a law. It's a metaphysical law that's as true as the Newtonian physics that you learned in high school. You think it's bad now? You have no idea how bad it can get. Read history to know how bad it can get. We have to be grateful because if we're ungrateful and always complaining, Allah is going to give you more to complain about. I was in one of the Gulf states and somebody was complaining about the price of gasoline, the taxi driver, 25 cents at the time. Now it's a lot higher. Why? Because they keep complaining. Go ahead, complain all you want. Because if you love to complain, Allah will give you plenty to complain about. But if you want to show gratitude, Allah will give you plenty to show gratitude about. They did a study at Davis. It's called the gratitude study for depressed people. They had them write down every day, every morning, 10 things they were grateful for. Over a period of a month, people's depression started being lifted. If you start counting the blessings of Allah, you'll never come to an end. And you can count blessings like just eyelashes. People don't have eyelashes. They fall out. Eyelashes are a wonderful blessing. Or some people have dry eyes. So if you have moisture in your eyes, what a blessing. If you have teeth, what a blessing. If you don't have teeth, if you have dentures, what a blessing. There are people that don't have dentures. If you lose one arm, what a blessing. You didn't lose both arms. If you lose both arms, what a blessing. Now they have prosthetic devices that enable you to do things. Ibn Abbas said, in every tribulation in dunya, there are three blessings hidden that you have to recognize. The first is that it could have been worse. The second is that it's in your dunya and not in your deen. In your worldly affairs and not in your religious affairs. And the third, it's in this world and not in the next. And you should be grateful for that. People now are complaining. Allah said, He's going to try you to see who of you are the best in actions. We're going to try you. You will be tried in your wealth and in your lives. Allah told us, you're going to hear all these people telling how horrible you are and how terrible your religion is. Allah said that. And if you show patience, and show piety, restraint, control yourself. Because that is at the essence of this matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَضَرْبَ مَثَلًا قَرِيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنًا مُطْمَئِنًّا يَأْتِيهَا رِزْقُهَا مِنْ كُلِّ مَكَانٍ فَكَفَرَتْ بِأَنْعُمِ اللَّهِ فَأَذَاقَهَا اللَّهُ لِبَاسِ الْجُوعِ وَالْخَوْفِ بِمَا كَانُوا يَصْنَعُونَ Allah strikes a similitude for you to reflect. A township, a city, a hamlet that was peaceful. It was tranquil. It had provision in abundance coming from every place. Like we have today, we eat berries from Chile. 
and we drink tea from China and we have rice from India, basmati rice in your homes from India. You get all this blessing from all over the world. So what did they do? Instead of saying, Alhamdulillah, kafarat bi an'umillah. They were ungrateful. This is the meaning of kufr. Kufr is ingratitude. You can be a Muslim and be a kafir in the meaning that you're an ingrate. The essence of Islam is gratitude, shukr, a feeling of blessing. The biggest blessing is that we exist. The blessing of giving us our existence and then sustaining our existence. He could take away that sustenance at any time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He enveloped that city in hunger. Look of the blessing of food. In hunger and terror. Why? Bima. What's the cause? Because of their ungratefulness. And this is where we've lost an understanding of our religion. We look at all these events and we don't see the real source of these events. Ingratitude. If we want to change the world, we have to change our state and our attitude about all these blessings that we've been given. Government is a blessing. Even the worst form of government is better than anarchy. Malik ibn Anas said this. These weren't ignorant people. These were genius people because he lived through civil wars. He saw what happens when things break down. This is the way Muslims traditionally looked at things. When the Mongols came down, they didn't say these evil Mongols. They said, This is a punishment God has sent us because of our wrong actions. When they were asked, Where did this calamity come from? Allah says, It's from your own selves. It didn't say, Oh, it's from those evil Quraysh. No. What am I really getting angry at? At a test that God sent me? Who am I really angry at? See, you can be humanly angry, but who are you really angry about? If everything is a test from Allah, then who are you really angry at? That's a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ These are days of shukr. Shukr is to utilize what God has given you. اِعْمِرُوا آلَ Dawood. Shukran. To utilize what He's given you out of gratitude. He gave you an eye to see. Not to look at pornography. He gave you a tongue to speak the truth. Not to lie, not to cheat, not to backbite. He gave you a hand to work and not to steal or to embezzle or to take things that aren't yours. He gave you feet to walk in righteousness. The servants of the merciful who walk, tread lightly on the earth. You know, they talk about carbon footprints now. Ibadur Rahman don't have a carbon footprint. They tread lightly on the earth. Iblis is the complainer in the Quran. He complains all the time. He's so upset about things. And he wants to just make us ungrateful. It's his favorite thing to do. Make us ungrateful. Make you ungrateful for your wife. Make your wife ungrateful for you. Microaggressions. You know, all these grievance theory and victimology. It's a disease that Iblis has spread amongst this humanity. All those tribulations that you have, if you put them next to all the blessings you have, they're nothing. And that's why if you focus on your tribulations, you'll become ungrateful. If you focus on your blessings, you'll become grateful. I advise myself and all of you to count our blessings.